If you went to school any time from the 90s onwards, the chances are that you've at least experienced a lockdown drill, maybe even an actual lockdown. Obviously, not all of them end in tragedy. Some schools go into lockdown because of a crime committed nearby, or because some parent forgot to wear their visitor's badge. There's lots of different reasons. Most of them have nothing to do with an actual legitimate threat to students. But better safe than sorry, right? I went to school in a post-Columbine world. Lockdowns were always taken very seriously, despite the fact that we lived in a fairly isolated area where most people knew each other. There were regular petitions to allow teachers to carry guns in school. Who knew how long it might take the police to arrive if something were to ever happen? But obviously, I'm not here to debate gun control, so I'll get to the point. Most lockdowns are drills, but I'm going to tell you about one that wasn't. I've always been a pretty nervous and paranoid person. For example, throughout middle and high school, I despised being in the cafeteria because I always seemed to get stuck sitting in some corner nowhere near an exit. It made me anxious, realizing just how much distance I would have to cross just to get out, even if something as innocent as a food fight were to occur. In upstairs classrooms, I would occasionally glance out the windows and ponder where or not the drop might kill me or if I can make it out with just a broken arm or leg. In downstairs rooms, I would tend to sit near the windows unless I was forced to sit somewhere else. Admittedly, this was also because I just like to look outside and daydream. But like most routines, after enough repetition, you get used to almost anything. If you work in a school, you probably know this like the back of your hand. In the event of a lockdown, teachers are supposed to lock the doors, turn out the lights, and herd students into a part of the room that can't be seen from the window panel on the door. This always seemed a bit ridiculous to me. I once had an English class in a room where the only spot that you couldn't see people from the door was, ironically, right next to the door. The idea of us just lining up there while someone jiggled the knob outside sounded horrifying. However, I did have one major concern. What would happen if I were caught in one of these drills outside the classroom? Was I supposed to run and bang on the nearest door, hide in a closet, run outside? I always figured if it came down to it, if I was near an exit and it seemed like the real deal, I would take my chances running outside. Teachers never really told us during drills whether or not they were real, but someone always knew. There was always that one kid whose mom worked at the school and would tell everyone else that they weren't real and that there would be a fire drill the next day or something. They have a special code for when it's real. A girl named Kelly once informed our entire algebra class, if they say lockdown three times, it's only a drill. Four times, it's for real. We all snickered, but what she said lingered in the back of my mind every time the principal went on the loudspeaker, voice crackling throughout the building, and I always counted, awaiting for that fourth time. 11th grade swung around. Now officially an upperclassman, I let a certain confidence seep into my step. I was 16. Next year, I would graduate and would be going to college. I practically owned this dump. I would see everyone that I hated working at McDonald's. You know, the usual 16-year-old spiel. I no longer felt the need to rush into first period. Instead, I lingered in the hallway with other relaxed juniors and seniors and made fun of confused freshmen and actually made eye contact with my teachers. This newfound skip of my step was what led me to cutting the first period bell very close as I wiped out my shirt with a wet paper towel in the bathroom. Someone had tripped on the bus and had gotten what I prayed was iced coffee on me. The stain did not look like it was coming out and I hadn't brought a jacket that day. I groaned, balled up the paper towel and chucked it at the garbage. I missed. Through the thick bathroom walls, I heard the distant crackle of the loudspeaker. Were they starting the morning announcements earlier this year? Maybe someone had parked in a teacher's spot again. Lockdown, 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 lockdown. I was more caught off guard by the fact that it sounded like the secretary was making the announcement than anything else. Only after a moment or two did it sink in. This wasn't a drill. I stood there, completely motionless, wondering what the hell I was supposed to do. Finally, I lunged towards the door and yanked it open, peering out into the hall. Every door was shut. I was on the second floor. I thought I heard distant yelling from below. My panic then settled into a cold fear that pulled in the pit of my stomach. I darted back into the bathroom, trying to rationalize things. 
Maybe I had misheard it and it was just a drill. I tried to remember how the person on the loudspeaker had sounded. Were they frightened? Forced calm? I don't know, and not knowing was the worst part. The police had to be on their way if this was real, I assured myself. So as long as I stayed put, everything would be fine. What potential school shooter was going to check the bathroom? That said, I ran to the last stall, the one for people with wheelchairs, and scrambled up on the toilet. Should I lock the stall door? No, there was no point. If they did come in, it would be obvious that someone was in there. What if somehow they saw me through the small space in the door? Could I somehow wiggle on the ground from one stall to the next in an effort to evade them? By this point, I was slightly hysterical, but I knew, in the back of my mind, like you always know in these situations, if they did come in here, I would probably die. Ridiculously enough, I began preparing my last lines. What would I say? Should I try to plead with them? What if it was someone I knew? Maybe I could talk them down. But I couldn't even convince myself, never mind someone already homicidal. Should I try to be the hero and go for the gun? Right, and get shot in the face. Perhaps I could stall them. Stall. Them. I started to laugh. I didn't know why. Crouched on a grimy public high school toilet seat, my chuckles faded into harsh breathing, and I told myself not to look up, no matter what. I heard a loud noise from down the hall and flinched, although I had no idea what it was. I tried to still my breathing, and only succeeded in feeling faint, and then I heard it. Footsteps. I was sure of it. Maybe it was a cop, I told myself. The footsteps drew closer. I hadn't been raised to be religious, but right then and there, I started to make bargains. I didn't care if I got shot, as long as it didn't kill me, or paralyze me. Actually, that might be worse. I just wanted to go home. If whoever was in charge of this shit just made sure I got home, I would do whatever the hell they said for the rest of my life. Maybe they didn't have a gun. Maybe it was a knife. Maybe I could get out of this with a few nasty scars and a story. The bathroom door opened, and I went blank. I'm not sure how to describe it. I felt completely removed. I was there in the stall, but also, I wasn't. Like maybe it didn't really matter much either way, like I was beyond all of it. For a fleeting second, I wondered if I would collapse and die of fright. I knew they were there. I heard them. The first stall door swung open with a groan, as did the second. I tried to close my eyes, but I couldn't. My eyelids refused to cooperate. The third stall door opened. I was convinced I could hear them breathing. I wondered what they were thinking. Were they excited? Could they hear my breathing? God, I thought. Don't let it be someone I know. The next stall opened, and the one after that was mine. Suddenly the loudspeakers crackled on. Lockdown is now complete. Students and staff, thank you for your cooperation. The person in the bathroom paused. They then turned and left doors swinging quietly behind them. I didn't leave that stall for another five minutes. My first period teacher was very annoyed, but I didn't really care. I informed him about what happened, and he called the vice principal down, and I relayed my story to her. She seemed skeptical about my claim, and told me that the lockdown this morning was only a drill. The staff at the school was questioned, but no one had gone into the bathroom during the lockdown to check for students. I never really heard any more about it, but I am certain that there had been someone in there with me, and they came very close to finding me.